the biggest update ever for Wear OS is here. At its I.O. developer conference today, Google just announced that the next version of its wearable platform is coming and it was developed in collaboration with Samsung. It's not the deep Fitbit integration as some of us might have been expecting since Google completed its acquisition earlier this year, but this is still pretty huge. I've long considered Samsung's Tizen to be the best smartwatch platform for Android users. This partnership demonstrates Google's ability to recognize the Korean company's expertise in this area. Though neither Tizen nor Wear OS measure up to Apple's watch OS at the moment, Samsung software at least offers good built-in health and fitness tracking, along with a navigation system that makes common functions easy to find. Wear OS, meanwhile, is a simple skeleton that relies on cards and assistant to get most things done, but has much more third-party app support than Tizen. We don't have all the details on what the new UI will look like just yet, but based on some renders that Google has provided, it looks like some navigation changes are coming. First, a double tap of a physical button on the watch case will let you switch between ongoing tasks like a Spotify dashboard and a Strava workout session. Google is also expanding its existing tiles feature, which lets you swipe horizontally through a selection of widgets to third-party apps. It was previously limited to just first-party functions like weather, fit, and heart rate. Some third-party examples we've seen so far include a relaxation timer from Calm. Hopefully, we'll see more support from developers since the Tiles Alpha was opened up in March. A horizontal carousel of widgets would make Wear OS feel much more similar to Tizen, at least on the surface. Google also said it learned things from Samsung like how to optimize battery efficiency and run certain processes in the background for a better user experience. Things like constant heart rate monitoring, for example, were possible on previous versions of Wear OS, but would sap the battery too much to be really useful. Some other changes include upcoming refreshes of Google's own apps like Pay, Maps, and YouTube Music, and an upcoming Fitbit app for the new Wear OS. Support for offline music playback is coming, and Maps is also getting turn-by-turn -turn navigation on the wrist soon. While there is no news of actual devices running the next generation of Wear OS yet, Google did say some premium smartwatches running the software are coming from Fitbit soon. Meanwhile, Samsung said that while its existing smartwatches will continue to run Tizen and it will continue to support the OS for three years, its new devices will be using Wear OS instead. RIP Tizen. That marks the end of one era and the beginning of another in the wearable world. Though no other company has said it will be making watches based on the new Wear OS, we wouldn't be surprised if Fosso, who's so far been one of the biggest makers of these smartwatches, jumps in soon. Will the Google and Samsung team up be the boost that the industry has waited years for? Will the new Wear OS finally give Android users a smartwatch experience that rivals Apple? Honestly, it's too early to tell. Until we can test devices and the new software out for ourselves, there's really nothing we can do but be cautiously optimistic. For reviews of the Apple Watches, other Android watches, and laptops, wearables, and smartphones, make sure you subscribe to Engadget. And as always, thank you for watching.